Hello, 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 and welcome to It's All Good. I'm your host, Latavia, and I'm so happy to have you all join me this week for another episode. And just getting started, I am grateful for the opportunity to be able to share my thoughts with you all and that you all actually take the time to listen. Um, I definitely want you to know I don't take it for granted, um, but just kind of in addition to that in terms of my gratitude moment for this week um there's so many things I'm honestly just at this point I'm grateful to be alive and grateful to be um in my right mind you know I think about old people older people used to say the Lord woke me up in my right mind but so many things have happened this year these last few weeks there's so much going on in the world in our country just so many unknowns And I'm honestly just grateful to be alive and grateful to know that I have family and friends um, who love me, that support me, and that I can count on, um, and also that I'm in a position to be able to help others. And so if you are, if you're not sure, if you're going through things and you're wondering, I would just say sometimes it's helpful to just kind of stop take a few seconds or minutes to think about, hey, I'm alive. I can, you know, focus on the things that you can do that are going well, because far too often um, we focus, it's easy to focus on what's going wrong, what we haven't accomplished, what we haven't done, where we aren't. And when we focus on those things, it can definitely get depressing. Um, So I'm saying this to myself as much as I'm saying it to you all, to Focus on, you know, think about the things that are going well. Think about what you have accomplished. Think about what you do have and who you are around and focus on that. And I'm positive that that will, you know, it'll brighten your day. It'll change your outlook and help you kind of just push forward, keep going, get to the next day. And that, uh, I would say, kind of focusing on what I do have or what, what is going well is part of what kind of prompted this week's topic um, for most, I mean, I love reading. So most of my life I have read, um, going to school uh, or even I would say law school specifically kind of put a damper on that because there was, there's still reading involved, but most of the reading that I do now is, you know, work related. It's for information purposes, not as much entertainment, but growing up, I spent a lot of time like a lot of time reading uh different fiction books sometimes not fiction mostly fiction like uh babysitter's club full house series um I did read a little goosebumps not a whole lot but um eric jerome dickey uh bb moore campbell uh sister soldier all of her books uh just so many any different things i would spend a lot of time at the library getting books i was sneak and read at night you know big part of why I have these glasses on now is because I would read at night um just wanting to read because I get caught up in it whether it's reading I love tv just stories kind of getting caught up in the fantasy world or you know the idea the way that uh writers are able to pull you in and get you invested in the characters and things that are going on like how they create all of these things I really don't know but I appreciate it um, but say all that to say that one of the, the genres of books I read were romance novels and, you know, you meet somebody and, oh my God, it's love at first sight, or it's, they're at conflict. They don't like each other, but they end up liking each other. Then they fall in love, they get married and even, um, you know, kind of romantic comedies. I like those just different or kind of the sappy love story movies that for a long time I you know like "Mm, I read it but I don't really believe in it I don't like it but when I was finally honest with myself I realized like yeah no okay yeah I'm a bit of a romantic at heart and realizing I would say as an adult even in thinking back to last week's episode and the conversation with my parents about their relationship and you know kind of some revelations I've had about that but how realizing with I should say I have realized that subconsciously I had internalized 
a lot of the messages from those romance novels or the movies or even TV shows watched that I watched growing up of just yeah you meet somebody then it's you go through your thing it's you fall in love happy happily ever after even Disney movies it's like pretty much everything Disney related is some version of you meet someone fall in love or the man rescues the woman and then they fall in love and they live happily ever after rarely if ever do they tell you what happens in that happily ever after the book or the movie always ends after they get married um but <clears throat> as much as I enjoy them I have realized that I had was basing a lot of things or my thoughts um on relationships whether it be friendships or romantic um or what happened in books it wasn't something where I was consciously kind of putting those things out there but <clears throat> excuse me um like I said just over the years in terms of kind of reflection and thinking about things and kind of doing my own doing my own uh check relationship check just kind of checking in with myself of hey what's going on realizing like hey okay the novels the books are cool that's nice it's a nice story but that's not necessarily how things work in real the real world in reality and granted there are stories or there are people who have met someone and fallen in love quickly it was a short they, they dated for a short amount of time and then they got married and they're still together or you meet a friend you meet someone you all develop a friendship quickly you guys just click and then you're friends you know friends for life and in some cases, I can say that, that has, I've experienced that more so on the friendship aspect in that um, I have developed, I would say when I was younger, developed friendships a lot quicker. But I think that's kind of just the nature of being young and being naive and not jaded because you still see the good in people. Uh, and because I think my dad was in the military, so I moved around a lot. And I can think back to even as far as kindergarten, meeting someone and they're like, oh, we're best friends. And I had that best friend and we did as much as we could together, you know, considering we were five and six. Even I remember when I lived in Turkey, I had another person that we connected quickly. Um, we were best friends for the time that we lived in Turkey. But then when I left, you know, lost contact. But even moving into like middle school, my best friend and I, we met it was, I would say it was fairly quickly in terms of like, hey, you know, I was a new person. She was welcoming, we, we connected, and then we started hanging out and developed the friendship. And it has lasted, uh, I guess at this point, close to 20 years. But it's not, it still doesn't look like the friendships I've seen in movies or friendships that I read about in books. And what I had to realize is, okay you're with like I said it's what happens in a movie or in a book it's a script it's it's written out there's very little gray or new I mean they put nuance in but it's just it's there it's static whereas in real life we're human we go, everyone goes through different things and so every friendship looks a little different um, every relationship looks different and so one of the things that I have learned is and this kind of goes in multiple areas and kind of thinking about comparison. You know, I've seen the phrase or written comparison is the thief of joy um, in the sense that just because my my relationship with a friend or my relationship with some with a significant other isn't looking like those that I've seen in a movie or the ones I've read about doesn't mean that they aren't healthy relationships. It doesn't mean that they aren't successful um, but it's a matter of kind of separating fantasy versus reality. And it seems very silly when I say it out loud. Like, of course, it's it's a movie. It's a book. Like, that's not how real life works. But if I'm being on, you know, being honest with myself and with you all, it, it's apparently I was doing that. I did think uh, for several years that no, it's supposed to look like this. And if it doesn't look like this, then it must not be right or there must be something wrong. And what I've realized is a lot of conflicts that I had um, in, in various relationships 
weren't always because there was necessarily something wrong. Um, oftentimes, I, you know, in hindsight, realize it was, I was, I had this expectation that the friendship or the relationship would look a certain way. And without realizing that I was doing it based on what I had read. And now I'm not saying this to discourage anyone from reading reading books or, or, or watching movies or kind of getting caught up in the story. Um, there's, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think it's wonderful. And I still read them to this day. Matter of fact, this past weekend, past week, I kind of uh, went on a marathon of reading books, which um, I hadn't done in a long time. I just, I think I read three in about the span of a week. I know one of them I read in, in one day, but it was just, it's fun to get caught up in the story and to see how everything unfolds and to just spend that time doing that. But I recognize um, in reading it, it's I'm as, as invested as I was in the story and seeing how everything played out, um, I was still very much conscious that this is a book. This is not actual life. Um, and so it's one of those things of just, like I said, when I say it out loud, it seems it seems strange. It seems like one of those things that yeah, of course that's the case. You should it should have clicked. Why did it take so many years to figure out that oh wow, I was in a sense putting these things on a pedestal, not a pedestal, but just kind of glorified like hey, I want this fantasy world. I want this happily ever after and not to say that happily ever after is impossible, but knowing that happily ever after is not a destination. It's not a a one-time thing. Whereas I, in the sense that I've realized in looking back or thinking back about the the different Disney movies or books and things that I've read or even television shows, it's always seen as or kind of portrayed as happily ever after is this thing that you get to and then the movie stops or the book ends but in reality happily ever after like i said i think it's possible but it's still a process it's an ongoing thing and my happily ever after is not necessarily going to look like your happily ever after um and so on and so forth but it's just a matter of what is happy for me what is successful to me or what is going to make my friendships uh my relationships successful um and that's in the sense of you know the relationship i have with my mom with my dad with my sister with friends and then you know eventually with a significant other it's looking at each one and then it's like okay what is working for us um because like i know some people who they talk to their friends every single day um, and that's just that's what they do they have conversations every day they're texting back and forth every day and that's what they do whereas there's some who you know you don't talk every day you talk every few days or maybe a week or two will go by and you don't have any communication but that doesn't change the fact that that's still your friend or that's still your family member they still love you they care for you there's you know when you need them, they're there. And I would say something it's, that I know myself and a lot of my uh, people in my circle have realized is, you know, just another part of adulting is you're living your life. Like life comes fast. There's a lot, like just different things happen. And when you don't hear from someone, it's not always that they're not thinking about you or they don't care, they've forgotten. It's just they're dealing with life you know they're dealing with their life and the things that they have and it's not possible to to talk or sit and talk or see each other you know as much as you might have done in the past and being mindful of that and then extending grace to yourself and to them i don't know how else to you know i don't have a whole lot of research or thoughts or things like that but i know like i said i can go off of my personal experience that as much as I enjoy and love reading romance novels or just reading fiction in general, watching um, television and movies, it's a matter of making sure 
that there is a separation or an awareness of reality versus fiction. And I do think art imitates life or uh, life informs art, kind of vice versa. At this point, so many different things have been created. I think a lot of things are kind of, it's repetitive. It made me think of the, uh, I didn't watch it, but I think Fatal Affair just came out and I've seen this meme going around of, you know, how many times do you all expect us to watch this same story? It's similar plot, just different characters, different settings, but kind of that same story playing out over and over again. And I think that same logic applies to a lot of movies, a lot of television shows, um, there are, you know, it's kind of so many things are already written and it's a matter of we're going to recreate it or put a new spin on it. And that's great. Like I said, I, I enjoy ent entertainment and I think we should all, you know, you, there's something out there for everyone. But like I said, the biggest thing for me or that I'm trying to point out is making sure you're aware of the difference between reality and fiction and not even not limited just to fiction in the sense of a store a book a book or a television or a movie is a matter of even thinking about social media because it's gotten so big and it's essentially kind of a big part of how we do life now that i think people oftentimes they get caught up in what they see or I should say we get caught up in what we see on social media. And even in that, oftentimes people are showing a curated version of their lives. They're showing the highlights. Um, they're not, you don't, you're not seeing every aspect of their life. And I think the same can be said about how we view what we see on social media in the sense of comparison. Um, it's it's easy to get caught up in of oh this person you know they're traveling they're doing this well not too many people are traveling these days because of COVID but um, just the travel or wherever they may be the different pictures that are posted you're thinking that their life is going a certain way that you know everything's grand but you don't know what's going on you don't know what they're not posting what they're not sharing um, and so just make sure that you kind of stay grounded in what your reality is. And even in looking at different things, it could be great for motivation or inspiration or just sheer entertainment, but be careful that you're not taking what you see and then trying to base your life on it or make the things or the people in your life do or act the way you see others are doing. Because I can tell you firsthand, it's a recipe for disaster you're going to be miserable and frustrated because you've created these expectations. No, you know, consciously or, or subconsciously, you've created these expectations and you're holding people to them and they don't even know about it. So nine times out of 10, they're going to miss the mark. They're, going, they're, they're not going to meet your expectations. And then you're going to be upset because they didn't meet it. And then they're going to end up being frustrated because they don't know why you're upset with them. And then it's, you can't really articulate it because you don't even realize that you had made it. And then it's just this big ball of confusion. So please take my word for it. Don't try to experience your, don't feel like you got to go experience it yourself. Just kind of take a step back and figure out, okay, where am I? What do I have? What, what is going well? Um, if there are things that you're not happy about, you know, kind of come up with a plan of action of how you can improve them and do it based on what you know and what you can do. And when dealing with your relationships with friends, family, significant other, even in business, be straightforward um, with yourself first and foremost. And then with those that you're interacting with of just, hey, these are the things that I would like to see or how I would like this relationship to go. Um, setting the ground rules, setting expectations up front, but setting realistic ones and not ones based off what you think it should be based upon how other businesses are run or other friendships look like you can have, I would say from a business standpoint, I think it's helpful if you have something that, hey, this is a model or a goal. Um, we aspire to have similar standards as this business or we want to have a similar business model. Um, I think that's helpful, but even in that knowing 
the difference between who they are, who you are, um, what is your value add, what is your end goal, what's your purpose. And so I think all of those things are applicable in business in, and in other relationships, friends, family, significant other. Um, and it reminds me of something my dad shared is, you know, the first and foremost, you've got to figure out who you are, what you want, what you need, what you like and don't like, what are your non-negotiables, and then build from there. So that way, when you are reading a story, you're watching a show, watching a movie, watching something on social media, you know, reading people, looking at people's stories, whatever the case may be, then you have a strong foundation, a strong st um, starting point of, you know, identity. Who are you? And so when you see it, it's like, okay, great. They're doing that. That's wonderful. Oh, that's a cute story. All right. That would be nice. Um, you know, maybe something like that might happen, or maybe this would be a cute date idea, or I can try to get a similar style outfit, something to that nature, but not to see that and then be like, oh, well, I don't have that, or my life isn't this way. I don't have anybody. I'm still single. So my life is horrible. Like, don't, I think we all have those moments, but don't dwell on those moments is what uh, essentially what I'm trying to say. Um, so like I said, I took me a little while to kind of get to that point or get to this point and being able to identify what it was. Um, and so knowing that, okay, maybe let me ease up. Don't watch as much of these things because I just need to be, or just if I'm watching them or reading them, being mindful of that and not getting too caught up in the fantasy or you know the idea of happily ever after um and just as with everything else you know it's all a process it's not oh i'm gonna get to this point and then once i get to this point everything will be good because as my parents shared marriage is not just a walk a nice little leisurely walk in the park um being an entrepreneur, as some of the other guests have shared, it's it's work. It's a process. It's an ongoing thing. Um, and so just those are, like I said, some things to keep in mind. So thinking about television shows or movies um, and even books, it um, my, my random shower thought for the week is um, about television, but just theme songs. Like I remember, you know, there was so many different almost every show had an intro song, a theme song that became not just the intro to the, it wasn't just the intro to the show, but it was like, it's a song that people still sing or would want to sing. Um, thinking about Fresh Prince, Martin, Sister, Sister, Family Matters, uh, Living Single, like those are those songs themselves that kind of stand alone. And I'm just wondering when did having a theme song or an intro music, like when did that stop being the norm? Um, it's almost like now if a show has a intro or a song, it's an exception. And I honestly can't think of many shows that are out right now that have a theme song that, you know, we would just, I would want to sing. The, the only one I can think of is power and then you know they tried to get get funky and change it up in this the most recent season but the reaction to people you know the reaction people had when they tried to switch out the the people singing the song was just like to me a testament to how much people really enjoy having a good theme song and i personally feel like people should go back to that like there should be something else that kind of you know that song that sets the show apart that um that standalone thing and I would like to see them make a comeback if not I guess I will just have to settle for watching reruns or playing back uh the theme songs from old shows another one the Cosby's uh Cosby show different world it's definitely one of my favorites but like I said I just do you all, does anyone know when or why that shift happened in terms of shows not having that theme song to where now it'll be kind of just some instrumentals playing with the title of the show coming up and that's it? Um, some don't even do that. It's just literally the name of the show comes up or the name will come up during the first couple uh, seconds or minutes of the show so you know what it is. But I just feel like 
that helps with the identity identity of the show kind of something else to relate to uh girlfriends that one just came to mind but like i said i'm i'm curious to know why it stopped or if there was some what the reasons were for them to shift um in that i don't know if it was a money thing a time thing but if you all know please let me know um and also to that point in terms of theme songs I'm trying to come up with one for the show. So I am open to suggestions and ideas. If you create music, if you sing, if you write, let me know. I'd love to hear some ideas um, so that I can create a theme song for the show. Um, and just one other announcement. I mentioned a few in a previous episode about um, something coming up related to estate planning or just legacy building. And so on August 5th, I, I along with another attorney, will be hosting uh, legacy conversations where we will take some time to explain uh, different methods of estate planning, just what estate planning is, some different documents to think about, um, and conversations to have, things that you can do to help uh build and not as you are building your wealth but to help maintain and transfer that legacy so that it continues on um for generations after you thinking about that building and maintaining generational wealth so that will be august 5th it will be virtual via zoom um, at 6 p.m i have put information out there i will include that in the show notes as well but please be sure that you um you join us for that session I think it's information that we all need, um, and whether it's for you specifically or for someone that you know. Um, so be sure to share that. And as always, if you're not already following um, us on Instagram, please do so. It's podcast. It's all good. Uh, on Facebook, it's it's all good. You can, if you're listening on Apple, please rate, and so that way it'll help in terms of subscribing. Or I'm sorry, people being able to find the show on all other uh, platforms, you know, rate, subscribe, follow. If you haven't yet, uh, the, epi the podcast is now on YouTube, so you can subscribe to the channel so you can see me while I'm talking as opposed to just listening. Um, there is merchandise available. The links for all of these things are in the my bio as well as will be included in the show notes. So. Thank you all so much for listening. Um, remember, focus on you and your identity, who you are, and don't get too caught up in the idea of, uh, you know, these made up worlds and don't let comparison steal your joy. So it's all a part of the process. Um, the good, the bad, the ugly, the funny, the in-between. Um, so don't forget that. Don't lose sight of that. It's a part of the process. It's a journey. And in the end, it is all working out for our good. So until next time. <laughs>